Hello, I'm Eric from Dark Matter X, and today we have a 2018 Subaru STI behind us. Now this car has its factory OEM shifter assembly in it, and we're gonna be going over how to install the Dark Matter X DM1 shifter assembly. Now, quick disclaimer before we get started, some of the surface finishes you see on this shifter uh, may vary slightly from our prototype model to our production model, but don't worry, all the brackets, all the geometry, everything's the exact same. The install process is the exact same. It just might look slightly different when you get yours. Let's go over some of the tools we're gonna need in today's install. Are a Phillips, a longer flathead, a rubber mallet, a set of needle nose pliers, a four millimeter Allen wrench, a 332nd punch, a 12, a 13, and a 14 millimeter ratcheting wrench, zip tie, a 3 8 ratchet, a six inch extension, a 10, a 12, a 13, and a deep 13 socket for your 3 8 Over here, we have all the supplied hardware. We have an included five millimeter stubby Allen wrench, which will be used to tighten these bolts in the rear here. And we have the DM1 shifter assembly. Okay, we're in the car now. The first thing we're gonna do is remove the factory shifter. And in order to do that, we need to pull all this interior trim out. So we're gonna grab our 10 millimeter wrench. We're gonna come back here and there's two bolts that you can either use a Phillips or a 10 millimeter to remove. Next, I'm gonna move up here to the e-brake and we're gonna pull this boot up. Now there's a couple plastic clips in here. You just need to push up from the bottom. And if those clips have any trouble coming up, you can just kind of uh, put it back in there, but you can kind of just like pull up on them here, pull up on them back here, and just apply some pressure and the boot should come up. After this, there's a Phillips right there. We're gonna grab our Phillips. We're gonna pull that out. Okay, once that's out, now we're able to get this center console free here. So we're gonna throw that back. We're just gonna grab the front of it and we're gonna grab the back of it here, pull up on it, and it's gonna pop out of some clips up by the shifter. And we're just gonna kind of pull it back a little bit. Now we're gonna remove the part by the actual shift boot. So let's pull the shift knob off first. And then we're gonna grab the trim and we're just gonna start pulling up and it's gonna pop out on the bottom there. And we're just gonna kind of work it back. It's gonna pop out like that. So you grab the leather boot here, and we're gonna work it off of the shifter. And once it's over everything, we're gonna make sure this is clear from everything else, like the e-brake. Now we can just pull this up. Sometimes this helps if you don't have clearance to pull the shifter back into a gear, and it gives you a little bit more room to pull out. So be very gentle with this. When you're putting it down out of the way. You can either unclip it, or you can just set it down by your feet. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pull out these two Phillips right here. There's two plastic caps that hold this down onto a metal flange. So we can just grab those with our fingers and you can kind of twist on them and pull up on them and they should come right off. There's some little barbs to pull them on there, but you shouldn't have a problem. And then we're gonna remove this rubber piece. So the center of it has a pretty small hole. We're just gonna stretching it over the shifter there to get it off of it. We're gonna pull this bolt out here that holds the actual shifter to the fork in the transmission. Now this is a 12 millimeter on each side of it. It was already kind of loose there. We're gonna reuse this bolt, but we won't be reusing the nut that, it was, that came on it. Now the shifter can just freely come out of there. Now the next thing we're gonna be doing is removing the reverse cable roll pin, which is located 332nd hole. So we're gonna grab our 332nd punch and the hole uh, for the punch is right on the top of this, this pole here. You're gonna line that up. You're gonna see the pin in there. You're just gonna line it up with the punch and you can press on it really hard and you should be able to get it out just like that. But if not, you can grab the punch and you can support the back of this you don't want to be hitting this up against your interior, causing any unnecessary wear. And you can hit the mallet uh, on the back of the punch to help uh, push it through. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is grab our 12 millimeter 
socket and we're gonna start pulling these four 12 millimeter bolts off of this metal flange. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pull these cables out of the flange. Uh, we're basically just pulling this little tab out of the flange. Um, so we're gonna grab our needle nose pliers. And the easiest way to do this is just take the needle nose in, stick it on that, and then close those barbs down. And you can just push it right out. We can pull our reverse cable out. We can grab our metal flange and we can get this out of the car. Now we're done for now uh, on disconnecting everything on the top of the car. We've got the cable, we've got the metal flange off. We have everything disconnected to the point where we can go underneath the car and finish pulling everything out. All right guys, we're under the car now and I got my 12 millimeter wrench. We're gonna pull this heat shield off. Okay, and before we can pull the heat shield off, disconnect the sensor up here for the downstream uh, O2 sensor. So I'm gonna grab my needle nose and I'm just gonna clip on that barb where the sensor mounts to the side of the transmission. We're gonna pull it down and we're just gonna unplug it. And then we're gonna do the same thing with this other sensor uh, connection that's holding it onto the transmission. We're gonna pull that out if that harness is free. We're just gonna snake that around in the hole that that's going through on the heat shield. We're gonna push this through the hole. That way we can pull the heat shield over the sensor. So we're gonna come over here and we're just gonna pull it through like that. And now the heat shield needs a little bit of, needs a little bit of finagling to get out. So we're gonna work it over at that side. You gotta make sure when you're pulling this heat shield out, you get it over the O2 sensor harness, up and over the sensor and out. All right guys, we got our 14 mil now. We're gonna take this wrench and we're gonna start loosening the 14 millimeter bolt that's going through the bottom of the shifter mount there. We're just gonna back it all the way out. Pull that out. Now the top of this drops down. We're gonna come to the back of the shifter and there's a bushing back here. At the bottom of the factory shifter assembly, there's two 12 millimeter bolts that go right into the chassis of the car. All right, we got the first one. Move over to this side. Okay, now that both of those bolts are out and our 14 millimeter is out of its threads at the front, the whole shifter assembly is ready to start dropping down. We're gonna grab it by the front. What we need to do, this part's kind of tricky. So, grab it at the front. We're gonna push it forward a little bit, right off of the bottom of the shifter. This guy right here. Now we've got some more room to work with. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna release this little clamp on the reverse pull cable. We can actually just pull this cable out altogether now. So I'm just pulling it through the uh, the OEM rubber membrane there so i pulled it out now i'm ready to just come back with the shifter okay takes a little bit of work but we got to the back side and then that 14 millimeter bolt that's going through the transmission mount to hold this cable on that needs to come out of the shifter assembly altogether it needs to come free but we're going to leave that there because we're going to reuse it we're just going to let it hang out there and now we need to finish pulling the front of this down. So we gotta pull it over the, the subframe there for the transmission. And once it's free, just come straight down. Just like that. Now the last part we gotta do here, we gotta get this rubber boot, this rubber membrane over this shift arm here. So that's where having a nice long flathead can come in handy. I'm just gonna pull, I'm gonna pull that accordion boot right up to that fork connection, and then I'm gonna stick a flathead in there to help work it around one side of it. All right, here we go. I'm get the first side off. Come in to the front now that I got the fork exposed. I'm just gonna help kind of start working the boot over the front of it. You wanna just keep working it over. You wanna start with one side at a time 
to get that, get that edge of it on the face of this bar and then work the other corner of it over this face of the fork connection here. So you can see I'm almost there and then boom, it's off. So now I'm gonna go to the other side and you can just literally pull it right off. And that's the factory shifter out. And now we can start the install process for the DM1 shifter assembly. Now that the factory assembly is out, we're gonna go over what you're gonna need to do to install the shifter. Now there is a way to install the shifter in one of the throw settings to where there's zero modification, but to get it in the shortest throw setting, you're gonna need to modify this flange right here. So if you'd like to use the shifter in the shortest throw position, then we're gonna go ahead and show you how to modify this. If not, you can skip over this part and install this right back into your car. So we just cut this metal flange here. And as we mentioned before, you don't have to cut this flange, but if you want the shifter to be able to achieve its shortest throw setting, then we're gonna have to notch out this section of the metal flange. So we went ahead and did that. All that really matters is that you cut it from the top of this bracket here, and then you cut it uh, around this corner of the, uh, of the flange here. It doesn't have to be super specific. We just need to remove this spot of the flange here where it would otherwise be impeding the arm going into the, sh going into the transmission. So we went ahead and we cut that out to show you guys. And now we're gonna go up to the top of the car and start dropping the shifter in. Let's do it. All right guys, we're in the car, we're ready to install this, but a couple things to check before we put the shifter in is we wanna make sure this bracket is just a little loose. These bolts just need to be a little less than hand tight. Uh, for mounting purposes, we're gonna, we're gonna tighten those later. And then you also wanna make sure that the brackets on the left and right side are moved. Okay, so once all that uh, is checked and done, we're gonna angle the shifter like this. We're gonna grab this arm here. We're gonna move it up out of the way and we're gonna start working the shifter down. So I put the bracket, I fed it down on the left side of the drive shaft there. And I'm just kinda, I just kinda got it down there now. And I'm just gonna kinda flip it around and orient it this way. So now that it's down there, I can just kinda leave it. It's, it's not really gonna fall. Um, I can just leave that alone. Now I'm gonna grab the flange, uh, this metal flange that we had uh, notched out and modified, and I'm gonna stick it down and I'm gonna reinstall it now. Just gonna kinda move everything out of the way, feed it. We're gonna feed the back of it underneath of the interior there. We're gonna clip these wires back into it. We're gonna line it up with all the holes and we're gonna bolt it back in. So starting with the back, make sure these bolts aren't uh, tightened uh, one at a time. We wanna get them all in, um, get everything aligned before they get tightened all the way. Uh, some of the eight millimeter bolts that were provided with the DM1 shifter and you'll notice these ones don't have a flange on their head. These are the ones you're gonna to wanna to use uh, in the car up here. We're gonna save the ones with the flange for the bracket down below. So you're gonna grab these, and now all you're gonna do with these is you're just gonna start threading them in, and you don't wanna thread them in all the way. You wanna feel down at the bottom with your finger there, and as soon as they start to come out of that little nut on the bottom of the car, you wanna just stop threading it. Uh, we're gonna come back to that later, but for now we're gonna leave it right there. And now we can come through and we can tighten these two on the back of the flange. And these bolts really don't need to be super tight. Uh, I mean, nothing over you know, 10 foot pounds on really any of these bolts. Now we're gonna come through with the two Phillips and re-secure the back of this interior trim to the metal bracket. Okay, now you guys can really see why we cut this out. If we wouldn't have cut it out and we tried to put the shifter into its shortest throw setting, which would be the setting that's uh, closest to us right now, this arm would, would be way up here and it would be, uh, it would be hitting it. So we basically just wanted to match um, the flange opening with the opening of the car. So in reality, we didn't need to cut the whole thing off, but that's just the quickest way to do it. Uh, you can just modify it uh, by just trimming what you need to trim off, but 
as I mentioned, you can just cut the whole thing out and it's not gonna make any difference. We just need that clearance in there for the shift arm. Okay, so we're gonna come down to the bottom of the car and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pull this bushing, which I've already done out of the OEM shifter assembly. It's the bushing that went into the transmission to secure it. And we're gonna grab our 14 millimeter wrench and we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna put that bushing right back in there and bolt that 14 millimeter right back in. It's basically gonna act as a metal spacer and allow us to uh, secure that bolt back in for the reverse cable where it needs to go. Put the bushing up there. I'm gonna grab that 14 millimeter bolt. And what you can do is you can put the bushing without it having it inside of the mount. You can just stick the bushing right onto the bolt and then you can just slide the bushing right into the spot because the bracket is slotted for the bolt. So put it in there and then I just pushed it right up into it. I'm gonna reorient the uh, reverse cable into its spot and I'm gonna start tightening the bolt in. Make sure when you start to tighten this, there's a plate that has a notch in it that that notch goes into its keyway um, and that you're not tightening the notch against the plate but it's going into the keyway. Otherwise this will, uh, will mess up your reverse cable um, orientation. So we've got it all lined up. Now, just tightening it on there. Remember, it doesn't need to be super tight. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our two uh, provided 13 millimeter uh, flanged uh, bolts and we're gonna put them right into the back of the DM1 uh, bracket. I've got the two bolts here. I'm just gonna start basically lining the holes up and hand tightening them in. Okay, I'm just barely doing the first threads on the right side and then I'm gonna move over to the left side and I'm gonna start threading this bolt in. Now this side has a uh, very little clearance but you can kind of work the you can work the assembly around to get it in there. Okay, so once we get the bolts just started with the first two threads with our hands, we're gonna come in with the wrench and we're gonna start evenly cross torquing the bolts back and forth so that we're applying even pressure onto the back of the bracket as it moves back into the car. So remember to cross torque these bolts back and forth. Now it's really important when the flange of the bolt starts getting close to the bushing, there's a metal spacer in there that's gonna start making contact with the flange. And it's also gonna mate up to the chassis of the car on the other side. This is the stopping point, And you really don't need to tighten the bolts on there very much. Okay, so I'm making contact with it now. This part of the assembly is super important that you don't skip any steps and you do it in this very specific way. We're not gonna tighten those bolts yet. We got some white line bushings in the back of that bracket here. They're gonna allow us to uh, basically connect the rest of the brackets with the other mounting points on the car. And between the bushings and some of the hole spacing, uh, the assembly is able to adapt to all kinds of different cars and account for small you know, manufacturing variances or, or just kind of differences. So it's able to you know, adapt to the faces that it's being mounted to. So we're gonna not tighten those all the way yet. We're just, we're just getting them uh, to where that stopping point is on the metal spacer. And now we're gonna move on to the brackets. They're gonna mount on the front, the left and the right of the shifter. Okay, we got our brackets here and we also have our stainless steel uh, four millimeter uh, hardware here. And we got our four millimeter Allen wrench. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install the driver side bracket, which is the straight one right here. So we're gonna take this bracket and we're gonna line it up with that hole right there. And then we're just gonna push it over so that it starts resting into its notch in the assembly. And then once all that's done, we're gonna start hand threading four millimeter bolt in. We're gonna leave that bolt um, a little just, we're just gonna leave it hand tight there. And we're gonna do the same thing on the driver, or, I'm sorry, on the passenger side now. You can see that it's lined up 
with the hole and it's lined up in the bracket. I'm gonna grab our bolt. Thread it in. Okay, now what we can do is we can go back to those bolts that we installed on the top of the car. We can start threading those down through these two holes on the brackets. So we're gonna go back up to the top of the car and drop those through. Okay, so now we're gonna make sure our assembly's out of the way and this piece is out of the way and we're gonna grab our 13 millimeter wrench and basically we're just gonna hand tighten these two bolts down. These are the bolts that are dropping down through the brackets right now that we just attached on the other side of the car. Now I'm just getting this uh, these bolts snug with the car. They do not need to be that tight. They just need to be snugged up to the surface right there. I'm putting barely any tension on that. It's in. Uh, this one might be a little harder. Pull the bracket on the bottom here and you can feel that that bolt has dropped through the bracket now on both sides. If you try and do these bolts all the way, it's gonna be really hard for you to get these brackets on. So you must only get these bolts flush with the bottom of the car, put the brackets on, and then come to the top and finish tightening them down all the way. So now we're gonna go back under the car and finish up with the install underneath. All right guys, we're back under the car and we got our two 12 millimeter provided nuts. Now we're going to put those on the bottom of those eight millimeter bolts that we just finished threading through the chassis of the car. So I'm just going to start hand tightening those. You'll notice the bracket is still loose, still not tightened onto the rest of the shifter assembly itself. Okay, I'm just doing a little bit of cross torque in here. Okay, now we can finish tightening those nuts on there all the way. Now we're just snugging them up. We're not putting them on super tight. I'm doing about another quarter to half a turn on there. Now that those are tight, we're gonna grab our four millimeter Allen wrench and we're gonna tighten. We're gonna finish tightening the brackets onto the shifter assembly itself. It doesn't matter if you start on the passenger or the driver's side, just on the driver's side here. Same thing guys, we're not putting these on here ridiculously tight. Okay, the brackets are installed on there. Now we're gonna move to the back of the assembly and we're gonna finish tightening these bolts on here. Basically what happened was we put those brackets on the assembly and we statically mounted that to the car and it was able to move a little bit on the metal spacers uh, inside of that bushing. And now we're gonna sink it down in the spot that it's naturally wanting to sit at. So we're gonna grab our 13. Sometimes it's easier to do this with an open-ended wrench. And I'm just gonna stick it on the front, finish tightening it onto its metal spacer. You'll see that white line bushing start to squish out a little bit. Uh, this is supposed to happen. The spacer is slightly smaller than the bushing itself. So that way the flange or the bolt starts to press on the front side of the bushing, start uh, mushrooming out and and basically getting it nice and tight inside of the bracket. Going to install the reverse cable now. What happens with this is we're just gonna feed it up to the bottom of the assembly and we're gonna insert this whole section of it right up into it. So I'm gonna just push this back a little bit, make it a little bit easier to feed it up into it. We're gonna go on the right side of the U-joint there. Okay, so you can see I got the bottom part of it in there. You can see it slid up in there. So we're just gonna give it a nice little snug. All right guys, now that we got the cable in there, we're gonna reassemble the heat shield and uh, reconnect this uh, O2 sensor into its harness. Now we're gonna feed this harness back through the heat shield and shoot it right back through here, connect it in. Now the next step is gonna be to install the reverse cable. So you're gonna need to grab a buddy and have them pull the reverse cable lever here that I'm pressing with my index finger. Now the easiest way to do this is to have someone underneath of the car and press this lever all the way forward until that little accordion uh, rubber boot on the cable is pressed and you have the cable up as high as it can go. Just press on that and then you get a buddy up in the car. It's gonna see the reverse cable come up through and then you're just going to insert the roll pin using the punch and the mallet if you need to 
uh, through the reverse lockout lever and into the cable and that's it. Okay guys, we're back in the car and this is the last step in the bolt sequence to tightening the shifter uh, onto the chassis of the car. So we're gonna grab the supplied uh, stubby five millimeter Allen wrench and we're gonna take this end of it and we're gonna connect it onto these low profile uh, five millimeter bolts. And we're basically going to, if you remember, they were just hand tight before, they're kind of loose. So we're just gonna make small tightening adjustments to them. Okay, that one's feeling nice and snug too. You guys are gonna see how much pressure I'm putting on it. I'm just gonna leave it there. Um, there's also this ball into it. Um, if you need to try and get it from a different angle, uh, you can basically turn this up to 22 degrees with this ball to get in there and tighten it. But the easiest way to do it is to use this end at the top of the car and tilt the shifter forward like this. Okay, next we're gonna connect the shifter itself to this transmission arm. So we're gonna grab our linear sleeve bearing and we're gonna insert it into whatever throw selection that we want the shifter to be in. And you can see, since we notched this one out, we are gonna be doing the shortest throw position, which is the higher of the two positions. So I'm gonna insert that uh, sleep bearing in there. And then I'm gonna grab the two supplied, I guess, uh, thrust washers. And those are gonna go on either side of this fork here when we install it and put our eight millimeter bolt through. Hang one of the thrust washers on there. Kind of a tight fit, so. And in. So now we're going to grab the supplied 13 millimeter uh, nylon locking nut and we're going to put it on this side. Okay, so we can hand tighten it down to the nylon part. Put one on this side, put one on this side. And the way we're going to tighten this is we're going to tighten this down until this, uh, the head of this flange part just starts to make contact with the fork. So we don't want to over tighten this, otherwise this will cause premature wear on those thrust washers. So if you look at it, it's not tight all the way. It's still move a little bit, still got a little play. So we're gonna keep going. Still feel a little bit of play in there. And basically what I did here was I tightened it just enough to where I can grab this assembly and feel it. And it doesn't feel like there's any uh, play in there and it doesn't feel like it's too tight. It does feel like it could get a little bit tighter. So we're just gonna ever so slightly tighten it. Okay, I did like less than an eighth of a turn right there. It's feeling nice and tight right there. I don't feel any movement in there. And now we're gonna install this boot. So the way this boot goes on, it's gonna go back onto these two studs, but we're only gonna install one of the uh, retaining uh, nuts on there and then you can basically pull this all the way down to that center body of the shifter pull the rubber over it it's secure on there and there's a nice tight membrane in between the bottom of the car and the top of the car and we still have uh, free movement of this collar here uh, so just get the boot low enough to where it's not impeding this and it's secure around that body of the shifter and then we're going to grab one of those retaining clips and then we're going to put it back on front here. We're not gonna do both, because if we do both, uh, it's gonna apply a bunch of tension on here, uh, which wouldn't recommend doing, because then you're not gonna get that good shifter feel anymore. You're gonna have resistance from this boot being stretched over it. So we're just putting that one on there. And now we're good to start installing the rest of the interior. Careful with it, we're gonna pull the shifter back. Right there's good for now. And then we're gonna line it up with its clips up here down here and we're just pushing it in heard it snap in it's good to go pull the boot so this collar has a recess in it and when you want to adjust the shifter you can just grab the collar here now and it rotates on the inside of the leather boot you can rotate it clockwise or counterclockwise to adjust it up or down okay now we're going to move on to the center console let's put it right back where it came from
All right guys, so we just finished the install procedure on the 2018 Subaru STI, and that procedure is the exact same for any STI 2008 plus. Okay, but we're gonna go over some of the fitment procedures if you have a WRX or if you have an older STI. So if you have an older STI, 2004 to 2007, the shifter can still be used in the car, but it can only be used in this first throw position. You will not be able to use it in the shortest throw uh, position. And you're gonna have this flange that we modified in the car. And that flange, you can either notch it out like we did on the 2018 uh, STI, or you can just take it out of the car. Uh, it's not gonna affect anything at all if you take it out of the car. So that option is up to you. Again, take it out or run the shifter in the first throw position for 2004 to 2007 STIs. Okay guys, if you're a WRX owner and you own a WRX between the years of 2002 and 2014, then you're gonna be able to install this into your car, but there's a few different uh, modifications that you're gonna have to do versus if you had an STI. So the first one being, all you WRX owners are going to have to install the six speed STI transmission arm. This one's different than the five speed and the shifter will not work if you don't install this with it. We're gonna provide the part number for this and you can order it from Subaru. Now the second thing you're gonna have to do, if you have a 2002 to 2007 WRX, is you're gonna have the same flange as those STIs and this flange is going to have to come out of the car or you're gonna have to modify it by notching it out like we did on the STI behind me. Uh, either way, pulling it out of the car won't affect anything uh, like it did in this car. It doesn't have the console mount anymore, so you can just pull it out of the car. If you have a 08 to 2014 WRX, then you can modify the flange and you can use both of the throw settings. Okay guys, thank you for watching the install today. Uh, bringing a 2018 STI with its factory shifter uh, and putting the DM1 shifter assembly into it. Hope you guys learned something and feel free to ask any questions or email if there's anything we left out of the video. Thank you.